Again, thank you for coming out this evening to assist us. We appreciate you coming out and giving up your evening. Uh, we're going to have a, another wonderful meeting tonight. We're going to start it off and do a recap of uh, some of the meetings that we've had thus far. We're going to have a recap of some of those meetings. Then we're going to have a, uh, we're going to jump into um, bond savings. Bond savings. Then we're going to have a little quick, short overview of some of the security measures, then a little bit of security presentation, and then we're going to jump into bond capacity. And then we're going to end the, with the results. Uh, our, charrette, our charrette exercise results will be at the, at the end of the meeting. And then we're going to do a, a meeting overview, and then we're going to end it for tonight. So thank you again for coming, and we're going to turn it over to Ms. Garcia. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Can y'all hear me okay? No. Thank you. I hate this thing. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Um, I wanted to do just a quick recap um, in case we had any new faces in, in, in the building, and I think we do. Um, we've had two meetings to date. Our first meeting, we had, um, we started that meeting with some community input. We asked uh, input as far as uh, why we think the May 2018 bond failed, and um, y'all shared a lot of good points with us. Then we went right into um, our revised project list. Uh, we took the May 2018 bond project list, and we revised it because of things that have changed since then. We've had a couple of versions since then. We saw a different one last, last week as well. And then we went right into all of the department presentations. So that was meeting one. And then we had last Thursday meeting two, which compri was comprised of a technology department overview. And then we had a financial uh, department uh, presentation. And at the end, we ended with a charrette exercise uh, where we put the posters on the, on the wall and you guys had an opportunity um, to uh, let us know whether you were um, for that project or not. And uh, we'll share those results with you a little bit later today. So another one of the questions that we got last time was regarding the bond savings from the 2013 bond. And I believe I have a handout that you, that you have with you. I'm gonna go through this with you real quick. So the top section of projects is all of, it's a variation of facility con condition assessment projects. And those totaled about $4.4 million. And you'll see all, all of the items that they are. Uh, Sterling Auditorium, Lee High School ceiling demolition, etc. And it tells you exactly where those projects are. And you'll see that most of them are under, under construction currently. There's a few that are still under design. So all of that money has been allocated to those projects there. And then underneath you'll see Green Center funding. This is not working anymore, sorry. Green Center funding um, will show you, it shows you there that it, there's a proposed budget of $4.3 million for that uh, project. You might recall someone mentioning last at our last meeting that we really did capitalize on using all of our funding that we have right now for that because in order to do a complete renovation, we needed more than the initial amount that we had. And so we've combined our original funding plus some insurance funds for a total of two point, close to 2.3 million. And the remainder needed for that project of about $2 million, we've also recaptured from the 2013 bond. And in total, to date, we have about 6.4 um, that we've been able to recapture and reallocate towards additional urgent projects. Can I ask you a question? Yes, absolutely. Um, last time how the process that uh, you go through whenever you want to utilize money from uh, existing bond projects weren't on the original bond proposal. And you said it goes through the Citizens Bond Advisory Committee first, and then it goes forward for the board's approval. Uh, on the items that are under construction, it seems like this has happened pretty quick. When did the board approve the items? Um, that was approved, I think it was March. Back in March, I'll ha actually have that date here for you. If those were approved back in March, then why were they on May 20th? Let me see. Let's 
see here. I actually am not sure of the date. I can, I can find out for you. But it was, it was before the bond was voted on, but it wasn't before the bond was called for by the board. The board called for the bond election in February mm -hmm. and had to have a list of projects, mm -hmm. and they were there. And we realized that after we went through the on expenditures in town that we were going to be five point five million dollars. Any other questions regarding these projects? Here? Yes, we have a comment about these savings. Um, you know, we had investment earnings that I don't know what the total was today. Um, several million dollars that contributed to that. So, you know, we had the savings from the bonds, but those monies um, were available for. Thank you, Marty. Uh, Brenda, yes. I'll say one more thing on, on the savings and, and how uh, the CBAC justified um, giving our go ahead on some of this. When the bond was originally written, uh, it, it was like, okay, so they, they, they do what's called a facilities condition assessment, okay? Um, and they prioritize things as a, a one, a two, a three, a four, a five. Um, and a one being high priority, this needs to be repaired now. Or kids are going to start in a hot classroom. You know, two, three, etc. Five being the least priority. Well, over the course of a five-year bond, some things that in year one were priority five to get started, over that time period, they progress up. And so, a lot of these things, uh, you know, were lower grade when we started. But the bond said we were going to take care of priority three items and above. So it wasn't real hard for us to say, okay, we've got savings. There's now items that are much more critical than they were when we started the bond. So let's, you know, that's why all of these are these are repair things. They're not, you know, a new construction with anything. So is there a list somewhere that shows like how each project tracked from what was originally budgeted before the project versus yeah. what the project versus? Yeah, we review that list at every CBAC meeting. Yes. And I believe that's um, provided to the board as well. That, that report is provided to the board on a weekly basis. Any other questions regarding those projects? Okay, um, an, an, another question that we had was regarding our security. Um, we understand that's a that's a big concern for everyone, and we wanted to show you how we've accomplished uh, some of those security projects um, with the 2013 bond. Let's see if this pointer works. This is just a quick overview of where the money was spent from 2013 bond um, towards security. You'll see the breakdown there. We've got about 9.6 million for the actual vestibules, fencing in the gates, um, door locks and card access at about 1.4, and then security cameras at about 2.1. Um, you'll notice door locks and card access has an asterisk by it. Uh, the reason being is that um, some of that that's shown here is from those additional projects from the remaining funds. And you'll see that in that other green sheet. So these are some of the vestibules that were done. We've done some that we were able to do externally on the campus, on the building, internally. We've got gates and readers, uh, different types of fencing around the perimeter of the buildings. We also have um, call boxes, uh, call boxes on the gates and on the front doors of the campuses when they lock those down. And then card readers at the exterior of specific doors. This is part of what we're adding right now. We're adding additional card readers um, on the remaining bond funds. We were only able to do initially a certain amount. 
We try to do at least some on each side of the building. Obviously, some of our campuses are very large. They have a lot of exterior doors. Um, this would help prevent the um, teachers or, or principals from exiting the building, not being able to get back in that side. So they're able to use their, their uh, ID badges to get back in those doors now. And then also um, cameras, exterior parking lots and interior of those vestibule areas as well, and throughout the campus as well. These were all of the campuses where all of those upgrades happened. So pretty much we've touched every, every single campus, and the ones that are not listed here are listed on that green sheet as part of those additional projects. Like I said, this was the original project. We did those initially. Those have been completed. What we're working on now is we're going back and adding those additional card readers. We're updating some of, some of the campuses already had a vestibule area. They were already set up, but they didn't have the hardware. So those weren't a priority um, because they had the, the entrance mechanism, but now they're being outfitted with that electric door hardware. So that thing, we have a presentation by uh, Dr. Dr. Price and Chief Alfaro, um, but if y'all have any questions related to the construction of this site, be happy to answer those. Dr. Price? Okay. I'm gonna mic to Chief but he may need that. I think my voice I think will care. Concerning security and uh, safety of the schools, we just handed a handout there to you. Um, if you have any questions, I know we had some questions that came up last time, so we wanted to address some of those questions. Uh, there was a gentleman who uh, spoke about a campus. Uh, I spoke to him a little bit more about that. That should not have happened, and it's one of those things we're going to look into and make sure that something like that never happens again. Uh, those type things, those are things we do need to know about because those are things that we do not want to happen again, and those are things we're going to work to make sure that do not happen again. Safety of our schools and the security of our students is our number one priority. So we do take that very serious. We work very hard to make sure that that does not happen and that our kids are safe. Um, so does anyone have any questions and we kind of go about it with that? We, we hand, in the, uh, hand out to you that should answer a lot of questions that we have about the uh, safety and security of our schools. But if you have any questions, we'll, we'll address those at this time. Yes, sir. Elementary, do they have an officer set aside for them? No, sir. We are hoping to work towards that. We are looking at now putting a, uh, a rover or a uh, rotating officer who will be going by and checking on those campuses uh, hourly or not hourly or throughout the days to check on those campuses and to get to know those principals and those students uh, throughout the day. That's a program that we're starting this year. So they will have coverage, but they do not have a, a security or a police officer assigned to those campuses. That's, that was the whole, Newton, of course, was a 19-year-old kid that went to an elementary school. Yes, sir. And created havoc in 3.5 minutes, three and a half minutes on uh, Absolutely. 28 kids because you don't have to worry about a five-year-old walking in with a gun, but you got to worry about a terroristic domestic or foreign walking in and doing the same thing. Absolutely. And one of the things to be what Dr. Price said, with the manpower we're going to have for this upcoming school year, we are going to have not one, but two officers that are going to be assigned to go into the elementary. So not only are they going to go inside and make sure that the needs of the campus, security-wise, are being met, have that communication with those administrators, but they're also going to be doing any patrol checks that need to be done, traffic issues that need to happen, uh, any, you know, Child sign violations, any school zones, any of that, that's what those officers are going to do for. And we're going to try to spend one side of the district, one officer, one side of the district, the other officer, to cover to cover as much ground as possible. But unfortunately, sorry, your name was Officer? Antonio Alfaro, I'm the Chief of Police. Okay. How many officers do you feel, I'll give what I'm getting at here, right now we have 24,000 students in the district, estimate. 
and I talked to Dr. Price earlier, we're talking about building two more campuses that will engulf 2,000 more students. At this time that I know of, there's 14 officers throughout the district. That allows each officer to be responsible for 1,714 kids, not counting the two new schools. And tonight in this meeting, which we shouldn't have an issue, we have two officers present here. But yet, in, a, in an elementary school where not one kid in that place could defend themselves, could, could jump on an attacker as if in a high school, there's not one officer assigned there. Excellent point. Excellent point. And that's something that we should address and that should be something that we take to our board. That's an excellent point. I think that's, that's more important than anything. And obviously, we did this five years ago. And we're still, I mean, what did we spend five years ago? I forgot, was it 14 million, roughly? And we're still here five years later discussing this. And there's not even anything in this bond to address it until I brought it up the other night. That, that's the disappointing part. Out of 400, let me see, $429 million is what I come up with on this bond. And there's nothing in there other than the 15. 1.8 for security cameras to be replaced. Well, well the bond money can't pay for personnel. Couldn't yeah. address yeah. personnel. That's, that's, that's why the hardware and everything that we need also. Right. The right. car that here is that still on, on every door. Right. But the board could choose to have all the police officers if they wanted to. Right. They could have done that in 2013, 14, 15, 16, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. It's That's a completely separate. That, but as a reminder, we did talk about that when we come. It was the last meeting of the one before. That would need to be addressed when we adopt our annual budget or add, we amend our annual budget to add those costs. It's a matter of funding, but that would have to be handled on the maintenance side. And these bonds can only uh, cover school, capital improvements, so it can't cover personnel costs. But just as a reminder, I know you were calling to talk about that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm new to this. Honestly, my last board, the last bond meeting I was setting was my first one. But I believe that you can't complain if you don't get involved. No, no, and I think it's a valid so, point. I wouldn't disagree. No, you're fine. Uh, I think that the general public, when they look at this, that's probably one of the first things they see. They don't understand. I don't understand how personnel doesn't get covered in this. But the other day we were talking about teacher races covering this. No. Okay. No. So that came out of the state funding, and this year is to replace something else that. That thuggy went somewhere else. Okay, and that's fine. Teachers deserve to get paid. There's no doubt. But I think the general public doesn't realize that that we're writing a check for $420 million and yet I can't get an extra security guard out of it for my kid. I mean, that's, that's a tall bill. Or the stuff that we're talking about here is not done. Now, I do, I do want to, if you flip on, on the back side, we do have security officer also, Bert, also in addition to our police officer. I understand there's like 24 of them maybe? Yes. yes point that out. Correct. And this year, uh, last year two of our high schools had three security officers. This year, each high school is going to have four security officers with two police officers. Each junior high has one police officer and one security officer. And, and I want, just want to say that the police department is working very hard to make sure that we're on the same page with our administrators to Things like what happened that, that you mentioned happen at, at GCM don't happen. We, we work very hard to be proactive and, and, and do everything we can to be able to, to avoid any any security issues. So this week, next week, I'm working, uh, meeting all the administrators. They're coming back, trying to get one-on-one -on -one with them, see what the, the needs are, so we can type, try to take care of as many of those needs as possible with the manpower we do have. Another thing that I think would be sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to add something I was thinking. Um, I was hired at Goose Creek in August of 2012. Um, when I came on board, we were just now adding, we had maybe a, a police chief and an assistant or something. We had two people, maybe three or four. We had just started it. So all of these have been added and increased our operating budget by these costs just over the past five years. And that's quite a quite an establishment of a force for just a five year period to be able to. And I, I know that we need more, but just to kind of give you a, a time frame of that, I thought that could be helpful. There's a school, anybody can look, you can Google this, and it's called the Second School of America in Indiana. There's an outfit in Virginia, it's 
called Tally Security. Now, I don't know the size of that school or what all the details were. They estimated that school to be the safest school in America for $400,000. Now, what they did is they installed, you know, cameras throughout. And this helps you all. If you're in that, and they made every room basically a safe room by bulletproofing the door and putting the kids in a corner to where if a shooter was walking by, he couldn't see through the door of the glass and see them. Or could he get through it? But it also gives a call box straight to 911 where that teacher can communicate straight to a dispatcher. So instead of having 2,000 kids running out four doors while cops are trying to go in and there's mass chaos, the plan is to lock them in their rooms where they're safe. This teacher can say, okay, I've got 28 kids in here, they're all good, but I see a guy running down the hall. My room number is 304. Now that goes straight to dispatch. Now, when y'all get there, and you're running through a hallway, you know they're in the 300 hall. I mean, that's all hardware that would have to be installed. They even have smoke and steam that comes out the ceiling to isolate somebody in a certain area. And they, we have, I actually attended some of the hearings the governor had in Austin over the school safety program in the last month or so, which was awful interesting because I was involved with one of the national state groups. And I'm very familiar with the talent program. One of the big problems with the talent program is that the company can put those in says if there's a fire alarm pull, that negates their whole program because those lockdowns don't go in effect because you can't lock students in a lockdown box with a fire in the school. And that's one of the big problems. That's why a lot of schools have adopted that. Because the shooter comes in and pulls a fire alarm, it prohibits those lockdown containers or rooms in those schools from being locked down. So they, my point is they can be circulated. And, and it should be done. There is no doubt in my mind that the school district should have done something about security way before 2013. Now, in defense of the school district, and I don't like to defend them all the time, but after the shootings that happened in 2011 and 2012, the school board came and was and uh, the 2013 bond, prior to that bond going into play, one was going to put money in to put in some uh, additional security, I can give the number, it was a couple of million dollars, to put in additional security functions in some of the schools and things. Uh, and wanted to put in the bond, but the board went ahead and okay. I could get the procedure manual and working, but they went ahead and okay to do that to start that then and pay for it out of some other means if it didn't go through in the bond. So they started that process prior to 2013. Some of these security functions, if you visit any of the schools, you'll notice that a lot of them are all different. That's because the campuses are all different. And unless they're in one of the new schools, the new elementary that have a standardized quote design such as that is, they're a little bit different. And in Lee High School, that's a whole other ball game because they actually had to go through the historical society to get that approved to change the facade on the building because it's a historical site. So the cost overrun to that came in pretty dang quick. But I think at this date that all the schools have the fencing in and all the schools have vegetables and lockdowns in. They all have decibels and lockdowns in, they all have the, uh, some of the call boxes in, those security thing in. The other thing that I learned in Austin, which I kind of suspected going in, is nothing that you can put into a school short of tank armament stopping is going to stop the term to shoot. Exactly. They're going to go into a school. If they want to come into a school, they're going to come into a school. You can put those decibels in all day long, they got big enough truck, they can drive through those decibels. And I'm kind of curious on here that y'all are interviewing Parkland school students, which is, I think, a joke. Because the problem with that wasn't school security. The problem with that was they had a guy who had 14 calls to a police chief and didn't respond to it. Yeah. The issue is security. So putting officers in all the schools is not going to keep students from dying. It surely might slow down an active shooter. Mm -hmm. And the school board, and I'm, and I'm curious as to why in this budget, and this is probably better for some of our school board members, is why they didn't put salary increases in the budget this year to hire these people. It seems to me that the elementary police officers should have been in the budget process already. There's no doubt that we should have armed laws on every school. Yeah, the only thing that's going to stop the shooter is a bullet between the eyes. No doubt. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's the only thing that's going to stop the Once they're in the Right the now, in the street, the only people that can facilitate that bullet between the eyes is these guys right wow. here. Okay? So we either change who's carrying guns, or we make sure that they either have a presence or can get there very quickly. Which is why I'm surprised we don't have the same good stop them, And even tanks are not going to stop them. It's a bullet between the eyes. Let me pull it back in to, to address uh, 
what you had talked about the talent program. Uh, we did review that program, and as uh, Mike said, uh, that program did had some have some problems. That's why we didn't pursue it as much uh, because we did find out that prob that program has some problems. It is a strong program, and it it was highly favored by some schools. But there are a lot of other programs that are out there that we're researching also. We're trying to find the programs that are going to be our best fit. There's, there are programs out there that are uh, gunshot detection that will, in the uh, event of a gunshot, lock down the schools and lock the kids in the classrooms, which is our procedures now, uh, and keep them safe in the classrooms until law enforcement arrives. So we are looking into a lot of those things. And we do go and meet with and meet, uh, talk to those uh, schools that have the school shootings to find out, we debrief with them to find out what went right, what went wrong, so we can learn from, for lack of a better statement, their mistakes to see how we can improve and hopefully not make those mistakes if it ever happens here. You know, uh, Chief Bavar and I just spoke to the uh, Texas School Safety, at the Texas School Safety Conference, uh, if not the win. That was our uh, Taliban uh, session. Because, yes, it is happening everywhere now. So we do have to be prepared. And we understand that. So, yes, we have started. We are a proactive district. Districts are now lining up to come to watch our lockdown drills to see how they can improve their district. Yes, it is a hassle. It is hard. When we first started our lockdown drills, if you will recall, some of y'all saw it on the Facebooks and on the internet how many parents were complaining about our drills. But now we have people lined up saying, hey, can we come and observe your drills? Because we do the realistic drills. So yes, we live in a time where people are challenging our students' safety. And we have to prepare and do whatever it takes to keep them safe. And sometimes that means thinking outside the box all the time. But later, ladies and gentlemen, thinking outside the box, box sometimes costs a lot of money. But we can't put a price on that once in a life. What about the Guardian program? We are looking into the Guardian program. One thing I have to let you all know, some of the things that we have in place in our district, we cannot put in the paper or we cannot put out to let everyone know what's going on. Because the public includes the potential bad guys. So if everyone knows what we have, then guess what? Well, we just showed all our cards, all our hands. Even your drills can work against you if you have a student shooter. Exactly. So you taught them what you're going to do. Exactly. That's why we only do so much. What's the garden for? That's where they're conciliatory by the teachers and the lawyer. Yeah, they've already done it in Huston uh, mm -hmm. this year. Sam Rayburn ISD has signs posted that says, uh, please be aware that staff at Sam Rayburn ISD are armed and they use whatever force is necessary to protect our students. Can you imagine that walking in? Yeah, I think it's great. It's a yeah. whole lot better than there's no guns there. Yeah. That'd be better to advertise that than to yeah. conceal that. There's two different programs for armed teachers on the school. One of them is they actually give money for it to pay for it. And teachers are trained. They go through a longer training course. And uh, the problem that I personally they can't carry their firearms, their firearms have to be locked into a, a firearm safe in their room and the shooter they gotta go get them and get them out. The other program allows uh, is that the marshal or the guardian? That's the guardian. marshal. The marshal that's the marshal program. Mm -hmm. The guardian program allows the school district to uh, set their own standards and most of them that are doing it are kind of following a general plan now but what I understand them often uh, as how they're training various people. But they get to set their training standards, they pick the teachers, and those teachers are actually required to keep their firearms on them concealed all the time, which to me makes a lot more sense in the process. I heard a lot of, uh, <laughs> I heard a lot of stuff in Austin. 
Uh, the biggest opposition from a lot of the groups, particularly among the man matching, is they're afraid that some student is going to get a gun off the teacher. Not only that, but I mean, like any program has pros and cons. One, yeah. one of the cons in this program is when law enforcement responds to an active shooter situation, we're going to eliminate the threat. That's what our training is. If the teacher has a weapon, it's law enforcement can confuse that teacher. That's a threat. So we're not going in. We, we are the guys with the guts. So that's one of the things that I've asked other school. Uh, police departments, what is our district doing? Are they thinking about the Guardian? Are they thinking about the Marshall Program? And that's one of the things that the common talk is that when we go in, we're going to go after the person with the gun. We're expecting only law enforcement to have a gun. We're not expecting the teacher. And the teacher's arm, we can confuse that teacher with the intruder, with the active shooter. So we put our teachers then. Well, hang on, hang on. There, there, yeah. there are ways around that, and that is no difference now than if I'm a concealed carry and I stop, help stop a rape going on the sidewalk and I'm holding a gun and a police officer comes up to them uh, in the process and I'm there, if I'm not actively shooting anybody, it's the same thing. Yeah, and yeah, and, yeah, you're and there, you should be trained to handle that. If you're not, then you need to find another job. So that's BS and when that was found. Well, there, yeah, are, that's, there, that's are just, hang on, there are mechanisms, hang on, there are mechanisms that school is using to identify those teachers who are carrying firearms once they've been branded and open. So to use that argument has no bearing with me whatsoever. I heard going on in the project. Correct. And again, I'm just repeating what yeah. the conversation between police departments and, and things of that nature goes around. That's what we, that's, we look at everything. When we look at a program, we look at the pros, we look at the cons, we look at what other districts are doing. And some of the conversations that I've heard from other chiefs of police, from other police departments, is that in those school districts, as to the reason, as to the why, they will have those programs in place. Like in Houston, like uh, Pasadena, these big school districts where we talk we, amongst each other and we discuss these kind of things as to the programs that are out there. So I'm, I'm not saying that's our feelings here. To speak, I'm just stating what is out there, what the talk is, uh, as to the reason why some of these districts haven't implemented some of these programs. Y'all just don't stop back and why do you carry that? Mr. Price, if, if you don't mind, I know this is there's a time for a good conversation like this, but I believe we're here to discuss the 2018 model. You know, and, and I know y'all was here to cover a few things, but if you can go ahead and proceed on to the, to the next option, please. And okay. if y'all want to have a discussion about that, have another forum on another day. Right. I agree it does need to be talked about, but we're taking up somebody in time. Okay. Uh, I have a question about the current bond proposal or what you're proposing based on security you do. The camera replacement that's proposed to bond, is that, is that replacing the active cameras? Is that actually going to add any more any more cameras than what we have now? Or are we just replacing what we already have? No, it's, it's just long-term scale. So we're actually, we're replacing those, but we're not actually increasing that, that video program at all, which, is, which I've heard is not completely adequate across the board, the number of cameras. So this is what I've heard, right? The, we're working, like I work with the chief, or the campus principals that there's been here. Is that the only is that the only I think in the current bond that has to do with security upgrades since we're doing the uh, current ongoing projects out of the current bond savings for security principles? That's the only thing I saw on the proposed bond issue that you're curious. Is that, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Was there any other things from the police department they wanted to see in the bond that didn't get in there? Chief? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's your job. I'm going to put you on the hot seat. That's not easy. Well, I mean, Bob can only pay for our equipment, vehicles, and things of that nature. You know, so anything that can help the police department provide a better service to the district, I would love to see it. I'm talking about the hardware that can be paid out of the bond on the campus. And I'm not talking about putting another squad car out front. Better, better security cameras help us because we're trained our security officers and officers to look at those cameras, to be able to work those cameras. So the better technology we have, security cameras, our gates, things of that nature, help us work with Matt and his crew to get it, you know, as much done as possible. So better alarm systems help us, better security cameras, more security cameras, and there's some right now buildings that don't have enough security cameras. There's some spots where they're missed. So if we can have more, I'll be perfect. 
And it's my understanding those cameras are not monitored full time while they're on campus. Is that correct? For all campuses at Allen, is, is that correct? Correct. And they're not monitored at a centralized pl uh, place like this police station? This is your police station? Correct. Okay. Uh, Dr. Price, maybe based on all this, <coughs> all this discussion, maybe we ought to really go back and think about what we want to put in a proposal, like a gunshot detection system or something. But maybe we, ought to, we got a lot of feedback tonight on this, and I think we ought to sit back and think about it. Well, we are still in investigating some of those systems. There are some systems that we are narrowing in on that we are maybe seventy percent impressed with. There's still a lot of bugs with some, um, so that's why I'm saying seventy percent. They're still working on a lot of bugs, so we haven't found any system that we're going to say, "Hey, this system really works." We're, we're impressed with this, so we don't have anything that we're ready to bring uh, or bring to the board and say, hey, we need to put this in our, we need this to come to our well, No, it seems to me that Houston Metro can watch every friggin' highway in the city of Houston and every damn intersection there is. And that it should not be technically infeasible, and I know that it is feasible, to put a centralized viewing station at one location to view and have staff on hand to view security cameras in all the school in one location. Now, I'm really surprised they had been proposed. So what, what we do have is we, the police dispatch office does have seven TVs that do rotate cameras through. There's no way we're covering all 2,000 cameras. Each high school does have a, where the officers are staged, have TVs allocated and they have cameras that they can, they can view live. Um, but you're looking at how many cameras can I have? Yeah, they're not in there all the time. They're out right. there. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting there watching all 200. They could be over the counter. Jerry can somebody walking one side. Door. That's all. I'm just thinking that maybe I'll need to rethink the budget money and the bonds for security. So maybe we need a line item called security enhancements and put a figure on it. And as it as time goes by, we will figure out where what those enhancements are. But you know, if we spent two million dollars in the 2013 bond on security cameras, you know, maybe I don't know three million, four million, a, a, a generic line item of security enhancements, and go we'll work through on what that is. That, that could be vetted through the uh, oversight committee. Right, exactly. The bonds exactly. <laughs> That's an option. Yeah. That addresses the issue of, of not having enough money in the bond for, for security for, for enhancements. That would be an arbitrary number that is not responsible to the citizens, though. There's a need for well, it. But like Mike just said, right now, he just told you what was in the bond addressing right. security now. Right. Okay? So. I'm saying put put a placeholder in there, and as this vets itself out, yeah, it becomes it gets more definition. But how do you derive it? I'll go one step further. It's not anything arbitrary at all. The police chief just stood right there and said they know that there are located. Matt just said they know that there are locations their cameras don't cover, so they know at least the some number of places of where those spots have already been identified. So you should at least address that, and nothing else. Well, yeah, you got a the first uh, camera system that went in was at Lee High School 10 or 12 years ago. It's my project. We put in 156 cameras. And we put the viewing mechanism, the screens, in the police officer's space within Lee High School. Back then, the intent was to watch the students, not to be looking for intruders. But we were having that problem, one of the big problems at high school, people that get on campus that really shouldn't be there. Boyfriends, former students, uh, uh, any number of reasons for someone to, to want to be on campus. And with the, the fencing, that's changing dramatically. But we have worked with the local law enforcement people. I believe we have an exercise coming up, coming that's within the next couple of weeks where the Baytown Police Department wants to use one of our, our schools for a training exercise. That's right. Yeah. And, and we're we'll having our active shooter training on first and second also. Baytown Police Department has already done active shooter training and canine training as well. And, and we work with them on a pretty regular basis. It sounds like maybe the general consensus here is that you need to go back in the bond proposal and look at a, further, a number for further hardening of our schools. 
I, I'm really more of a party uh, than I am for dealing with them after they're already beside you. Uh, it, it, what we can do, uh, I am not a metal detector at all. But I think there are things that we can do. Uh, I, I think you'll have a better chance of selling bond if you, you're going to have a hard time selling bond if you don't address more security. Hardware, hardware, not, not personnel, hardware. I don't know how many are familiar with Hopkins. Wood Forest Bank has a small substation in Hopkins. And so Harris County has a little office in there. There's no reason why we don't say, hey, Harris County, Baytown, we'll build you a 2,000 square office in our school. All we want is your extra cars parked here and your officers can have computer access. It's basically, they see police coming in and out also. They don't never know how many people are going to be there. And the same way, you're not going to rob a bank. But the other reason why you're not going to rob it because there's three cop cars sitting outside and the Harris County Sheriff's badge on the door that says right underneath the force. Y'all's presence alone deters bad things. So, I mean, I'm all for, hey, build them an office on the campus, on every campus. Have three or four officers that can come in there, do their paperwork, they're in and out all the time. I mean, that's something that we could do. Even if it's just remodeling the whole classroom, their presence is still in and out. These are, if we have to do something, like if you said this is not a security meeting, if we have to build a building, I think maybe we should put that in the bond. I mean, I, the last thing I want to hear in the next four years is that we didn't allow for security last time, so we couldn't build this little guard shack out in the yard. And, and we don't have, well, we should mention it now, but we do, I am in contact with Chief Doherty and uh, Harris County Sheriff's Office, Precinct 3, and they do patrol. Our schools, they do go and they sit outside and write the reports outside of our schools and other units do. Um, for example, the time where after uh, Santa Fe that we had a week or two of a lot of a lot of threats and things of that nature, I was in constant contact with the Baytown Police Department to have more officers out there and we've got the full support. We're working a lot more with Baytown, with the Sheriff's Office and with Prison 3. Uh, now, just to get more like you said, more visibility. So we are, we do work with them. Uh, we don't have what you, what you mentioned in our course, but we, we definitely do work with them a lot. That's not a bad proposal, though, yeah. to um, add to our campuses a... You're not paying for an extra officer, but hey, we'll build you a little room. Y'all need to, y'all do, y'all do tickets down the road. Hey, y'all come over here, set in here. There's always coffee made for you. You can set at a desk, do your reports. But students see cars coming and going all the time. <coughs> I mean, that's hell. Even if you had a cane on you and just walked in there for once or twice a week, all these kids peddling drugs on the schools. They're like, man, I better not go this day. The canine's here. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I keep them out one day, I'm better than being there five. That's outside the box stuff. So, could you write that up for me, please? Yes, sir. Thank you, Joe. That's a good thought. Um, Anything else, and we're going to move on because we have bond capacity that we need to move into that section, that presentation. Any other thoughts on security? What is the point of the fences if you are not covering the whole campus? Like, for instance, I live right there in Lakewood, so I pass by Baytown Junior every day going mm -hmm. home or leaving to work. I see that y'all have a fence, and there is like a clear way to go all the way underneath it. It's not all the way down to the ground. And then I always see the back doors going to closer to the church, open all the time. Yeah. We're, we're currently addressing those issues where there's gaps, where there's ditches. We're yeah. addressing those right now. Those have been brought up, and the, the fence company is supposed to be finishing those up. But thanks for bringing that up again. Anything else on security before we move on? Ms. Grimes. Um, good evening. Uh, good to see everybody again. Um, I wanted to introduce our financial advisor, uh, Ryan O'Hara. He's with HSE. Uh, say that. Purchase and Shockey Early. Why do you have the microphone? Thank you. Can you hear me? Wanted everybody to. Um, uh, welcome everyone again, and uh, just wanted to introduce our financial advisor, Ryan O'Hara. 
Uh, I've worked with Ryan at several districts. He's been doing this for a lifetime. He uh, works for HSE, and he is going to present to you some information about our bonding capacity, which means what is our capacity for how much debt we can take on and what that would cost us, and a little bit of historical information. So here's Ryan. Thank you, Mark. Again, Ryan, I'm here. Uh, thought we'd look back on the you know, 2013 bond program to kind of give you a little uh, uh, history uh, as we lead into the, the, the next bond program. Uh, we projected, and this is one of my slides from way back when, uh, but we projected that the uh, full impact of that bond program, all $267.5 million, would be uh, 42 uh, and a quarter pennies. Uh, turned out to be uh, under 40 cents at 39.189 and change. Uh, and we just like to show that because we, we put a lot of uh, assumptions into these bond programs, interest rates, how quickly we sell the bonds, uh, taxable assessed valuation growth, and things like that. So what we try to be uh, conservative in our numbers and kind of come in well below. So this kind of gives you an idea of, of what we did last time. And, and, and we'll use those same conservative assumptions as we lead into this. You, you know, you never want to be too aggressive on your assumptions and come out on the wrong end of uh, your tax rate projections. Uh, Mark, you also put together another slide. I don't know where the clicker is. Let me see if I can. Uh, and this is simply a, a look at Harris and Chambers counties. Uh, debt service tax rates as compared to other districts. You see Crosby is leading the way at 50 cents uh, on their debt service tax rate and uh, we're, we're at 26189 on our current INS rate. You want to go ahead and pull up the So I, I ran three different scenarios and I'll have, I have paper copies over here but let me go through it's a lot of numbers. We looked at, uh, very simply, we looked at a $150 million scenario, a $200 million scenario, and a $250 million scenario. And with each of those scenarios, we, we made different assumptions to kind of give you an idea. Uh, again, there's a lot of numbers on this page, but basically with a $150 million bond program, which is the first slide, we broke it down into three $50 million sales, one in 2019, one in 20, and one in 21, again, for a total of $150 million. The sequence of those sales is, is, is very impactful on your on your uh, tax rate. If you if you sell all 150 million in year one, you're going to see that tax rate rise a lot quicker uh, than if you spread it out, say, over five years. But in this uh, example, we used uh, a three-year uh, bond program. The other assumptions that we used, we looked at, uh, and it's highlighted in that green section, uh, and that's our uh, annual uh, debt service contribution from our general fund. So we. So if we look at three scenarios in this $150 million scenario. Uh, we assume that we're going to dedicate uh, 500, I'm sorry, $5 million a year from 2019 out to 2031. The middle scenario, uh, $2.5 million a year is committed to put, be put into the debt service fund, effectively buying down your tax rate. And then uh, the far right column, we don't, we don't transfer any money at all, so it stands, it stands alone. Uh, kind of in the top there, you can see the peak tax rate on that one scenario where we're contributing $5 million a year. It goes up a penny and a half to 27689 The middle column where we're just only contributing $2.5 million a year. Uh, it goes up three and a half cents to just under 30 cents, 29689 uh, And then the last scenario, it goes up five and a half pennies to 31689 uh, We've got the taxable assessed valuation over on the left-hand side, just under $13.4 billion. We grew that for four years at 2%. It's very conservative. We're only assuming 50% of the value of your 313 projects. Uh, and I've got some conservative uh, interest rate assumptions on, on each of those bond issues. Uh, you want to go to the next slide? This is the $200 million bond program. Again, doing the same thing. We're selling them in equal installments. Instead of $50 million a year, you're looking at 66 million, 665 uh, for the first two years, and then a little, little higher uh, uh, bond sale to get to the 200 million over the three-year period. Uh, with the five million dollar annual contribution, you look at a peak uh, tax rate of 29,689, which is a, a three and a half cent increase over where we are now. With the 2.5 million dollar contribution commitment, uh, you're looking at a five and a half cent increase up to 31,689. And then with no contribution, standalone, 
Uh, you're looking at a seven and a half cent increase up to 33,689. And if you want to go to the 250 million, again, so now we're going, we're selling 83,330,000 and change each year for a total of 250 million over the three years uh, with a five and a half cent uh, increase with a $5 million commitment, you're looking at 31,689 as your peak tax rate. Uh, the middle column there, the $2.5 million annual contribution, uh, gets you 7.5 cents higher under tax rate to 33,689. And again, with no debt service contribution, where it's basically standing on its own, uh, that's 9.5 cents for a grand total of uh, 35,689 on your peak tax rate. So it's kind of giving you, so it's nine scenarios, if you will, for, you know, Reach, reach, reach level 150 to 200 to 250, just to kind of give you some bookends of, of what we're looking at. Be happy to answer your question. Yes. Can you elaborate on how the uh, general fund to IMS transfer buys down the tax rate? Well, basically, you're, you're taking, you know, I'm a debt guy, I'm on the IMS side, and there's operations money and general fund money, so every time you're moving money over there, it's just we just don't have to set that rate as high. I and mean, you kind of see it through. Through the numbers. Right, but it's taking money from the MO side. That's correct. Which means that we're being taxed on that anyway. So it's not really not buying down the tax rate, it's buying down the INS rate by keeping the MO rate higher, but we're value limited on the 313 agreement projects on the MO side, so we actually have higher tax rates. Yeah, and on the INS. district is able to consider that as an option. They never were in the past because of the Chapter 313 limitation agreements that we have brings in excess revenue above and beyond what we get from the state and local collections. These are agreements we have with industry, and so because the general fund has some excess funds available, at least over the next 10, 12, and we have two more coming on, so maybe maybe we stretch it out to the next 14 years, it allows the district to consider utilizing those funds, which will flow to the general fund balance and be unrestricted, if, if you will to contribute or transfer over. Now this is a board, this is a policy decision that is the board's option. And that the board will have to decide if in fact it wants to can do any of that. I mean those funds could be used for other purposes as well, like security or, or other or other things. But it is going to make the rate higher if you don't contribute anything. With the 313 agreements, don't we have more taxable value on the INS side than that? No, we do. Uh, you know, that's a complicated statement because of the funding formulas. It does because the value's higher, but the, the yield per penny on the M&O side, some of those pennies that are in the golden category, those pennies yield really high. They, they, they yield the same as Austin ISD, which is a lot higher value than our penny is going to generate no matter what dollar you tax it on. So some of those pennies are, are higher, but, but in general... And, and we look at every year. We look at that every year and determine but when. One thing if we were getting rid of golden pennies, that would cost us some right. state money. Right. But the other one would actually save us money and give us a higher yield for the penny on the yep. value. So it really isn't buying down our tax rate by transferring that money. It is theoretically increasing our tax rate because it's costing us more in tax dollars to uh, generate. Well, these dollars aren't coming from taxes. These dollars are coming from industry. Agreements we have with industry and like our foreign trade zone money, those monies are not included in the local tax assessment. These are monies that are generated outside of that. So, um, you know, that's why we end up with excess fund balance because all of those pennies that we tax locally, they pay for operating costs, salaries, maintenance, all of those things. But we have a little bit of excess, and we've been generating a little bit of excess. It's not because of what we've been taxing as a local tax uh, rate, but it's because we've made these agreements with industries that have supplemental payments coming to the district. And the foreign trade zone agreement, there was a time, yes, we used that money, and it was a time we were collecting almost $6 million from Exxon just on the foreign trade zone agreement. The, the, the uh, oil price 
prices went so low that it went down to one year, it was like a million dollars, 1.6, I think it went down to as low as. And it's come back up, you know, two million, three million. But those monies come in and they generate an excess in our fund balance that we can use for these purposes if the board so chooses. Now, there's been other things that say that don't, that don't get included in the bond. There were so many things that were left out of the bond last time that a lot of those monies, they bought buses, they bought technology. We used those monies for things that didn't get included in the bond. So, you know. But you could give Matt $5 million a year and he could buy a computer replacement equipment that he needs without adding $30 million of interest to in the bonds. Well, we can't add $50 million worth of computer equipment because we don't have those kind of funds. And, you know, no, and you can say five mil, five million, but you know the budget. The reality is, is that the replacement needs over the next five years are going to add up to about fifty million. Right, but that's so we don't have that much. Right, but you got twenty-five million up there, so that's a it's a start. That five million. Yeah, like Mark said, that, that's a board decision of what they want to do. Yeah, and I think the board is looking more towards the zero to <laughs> two point five, and not really going that. They want to go that high. But I mean that's a board decision. We have to we provide it so the board will have that knowledge and to make an informed decision so they can see the different scenarios and what the difference is. But they're not likely to choose that high of a contribution, I wouldn't think. If any, I think they might lean more towards the zero side, which would drive the rate. And, and again, these are very conservative because we do expect the values on the IS side to grow even further because of the growth that we've had in the expansions. So like we said, this is very conservative. That nine and a half cents might be ultimately, if it's like the 2013 bond, it might be only six and a half cents. And we're going to do what we can to maximize the dollars we generate with any tax rate we set. And we do look at that. I appreciate that. And we look at it every year. We just did the penny swap a couple years ago. And we, we run every scenario. Uh, we decided maybe this year isn't the year to lower the m and rate down a few pennies, but maybe next year is because it's kind of looking like it might occur within the next few years that we actually have to lower the rate again. Well, we, don't, we also, we don't know what's going on in Austin. I mean, we've been, we've been wrestling with state funding for, I've been in business 25 years. It seems to be, we've been talking about it for the last 15 years. So uh, that's one of the things too. We don't have any clue what's going to go down there. Hmm. Any other questions? I think Marty passed it out, so if you, Anything comes up, be happy to answer the question at the next meeting. If you come up with that Thank you. Questions about how this is organized? So it looks like the flow 
closest one to uh, the majority now was a split on the Cambria replacement. Yes, that's yes, right. that's correct. Mm -hmm. so, so they're categorized within, within the each uh, category as well. So major projects you'll see uh, one, two, and three, and then specialties you'll see they're also priorities one, two, and three. They're grouped together. So based on this, if, if we Yes, just if you went off with the right. notes from this. So. I, I, haven't done, I haven't done the, the map on it, to be honest with you. All I did was take um, each one of them and prioritize them by what the responses were. Right. So it makes me, yeah, it just makes me wonder what have we learned from May? Well, no one's, no one's just made any decisions about what projects are going to be on, on, on the bond. This is just the results regarding each individual project. So what are our next steps? To, like what is what is the district taking from this? What what is what are we doing? I'm not sure that I can answer that very clearly. Um, I know that they've requested input from the community. I think that's what we've begun to do, and I believe we have another an additional survey planned for you guys to, to complete based on the information, the capacity information that Marty uh, just presented. Um, so. Um, Do we know what direction we want to go? 
I think we all agree we probably need a junior high, probably in elementary too. But when you get beyond that, you know, we like agree for security. What type of security? What level? What are we going with? Once we get beyond that, I think we're still kind of in the gray area as, as a community and as a board and as an administration as well. So I think the information we've gotten uh, for the past three weeks uh, has been invaluable. Uh, we know, I think we've got some marching orders on pay security, uh, marching orders on, uh, you know, we've got some information on what price, I and mean, I think it's felt pretty comfortable that 437 million uh, was kind of too much for the majority of our community at this time, and that's, that's fine, it's acceptable. Uh, it's, it's our community. I mean, it's, I mean, the board doesn't vote the election, we just vote the quality election. So the community, you know, we need to know what the community wants. And it's not just an amount, but what, is in, what makes up that amount. So I think we've got some opportunities for us to finalize and get better information on the security piece, uh, to find out exactly what, you know, I think we, like I said, a lot of the main pieces we know is just it's the next level. Uh, certain things, you know, Ceiling tiles, something you want to have those in the bond, you know, you'll see. I mean, you and I have had that conversation. Right. And there's probably some other things on your list, and everybody's going to have the differences on their list, but eventually we'll find out what, you know, those that consolidated in two thirds of the group. Okay, what, what do we all agree on? Well, hardly, the next level, what do we agree on? The next level, there's going to, there's going to be some differences. We have some 10 people for a bond package, you're going to get 10 different answers. But hopefully, on six of those 10 items, they're all going to be on the table. are all going to have those top six. You can agree on that and go to the next one. So that's kind of where I'm thinking we're, we're going with this. That, you know, I'll, I'll get you. I got you. Uh, so I keep your arm up too long. So that's what, I, that's what I've been taking from it. Uh, just getting information to, to know, you know, and since the bond election, you know, then we got Santa Fe right after that. And that, 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 that changed a lot of people's minds. They, 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 they think it became a lot more real than they had been. Uh, so there's going to be more meetings after this? I, I fully anticipate it. I know there's one more in There's one yeah. more as an option for next week, but I don't, I don't, I don't think uh, Beth's going to address that. That's, I think she wants to do the survey, and we may end up meeting a little bit later in the year on that. Uh, do you have a question? Well, it, it's really kind of just going back to Tom's question about the security piece. Because when I first heard him talk about the security piece, I was So what do we expect to be a different result? 
if we're going back with exactly the same thing, why would they expect a different result? Well, I'm asking in my opinion, that is, this is not a proposal. This is not a proposal. I mean, it's the same thing we had before, so it's our starting point. What on that list is taken off? What needs to be added? And that's where we're going. Are we there yet? No, we're not there in three weeks. But we, we have a discussion. We know some priorities have, wrote, have, have gotten a lot higher uh, since last May. The security is being low. The next one is, we needed the next phase for us to be, okay, what are, we, what are, what are of this list? Or any item that's not even on there that can be brought up later. Do we need to keep or, or not keep? And then, then you can begin the process. Okay, this is what we have. This is our part. This is our, our project per se. What you know, our, our proposal. <coughs> then what do we want to start? How can we sell it? How can we best sell it? And I don't think we're. I don't think we're there yet. I got the impression from your comments that we're on the same page. We're not. We're not there yet. Yeah, we got, I think we have about two or three more steps to go until we can get to a point to where, as a community and as a committee, we can say, this is what we want. So we can go out, and anybody says anything on Facebook or social media or gets you into Walmart, you can say, you know what? I agree with you. However, we as a committee met, and this community says, this is what we think we need, and this is what we think we can afford, and this is what then prioritize that stuff. So it's not people on Facebook are bashing or just a bash. I got, and I'm not accusing anybody in this room of saying of doing that. So don't, don't, please don't take it that way. But it would be, be different from the previous bond and that it will be developed more with the community involvement, with what they what they feel comfortable with, what the priorities are. As before, the last time it was a community a committee that did a fabulous job that the board got that the board got it about three or four weeks we had to call the election. And this is learning from us a better opportunity for us to plan better. So it's a bond. You don't want to rush a bond. I mean, you're asking your community. You're putting it all out there. Community, this is what we think we need. And if you haven't done your board hasn't done their homework, or they didn't, they didn't, they didn't have a, a crunch set of timeline, and not able to put a good bond out there, what happens? It fails. And it makes the district look bad, makes the bond look bad. And across the state of Texas, to some people, it makes the community look like they don't support their schools, but they don't know the real story. This community does support their schools. We did not put the best bond package out there. And that's what we're trying to meet with you tonight. And, and many times, it's, it's to put a better product out there and, and get more feedback. So that's kind of like what I've learned from the process. Uh, you know, I was board president right three weeks before the, we had to call the election. So uh, definitely a great uh, learning opportunity, if you want to call it that. But uh, you know, the key thing is getting our, the, the community together. And, and not not being, you know, some people I, I've read uh, felt the board kind of just shut it down on the community. Uh, I didn't much care for that, but I felt for three weeks before you had a call election, what, what options do you have? You know, you're, 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 we were painted in a corner. Uh, hindsight's always 20 But, you know, uh, make a mistake twice, that's you know, shame on me the second time. Okay. The second time, we're not going to, what we're going to do as much as we'll, we'll, I would rather delay it and get it right. In Russia, and, and not get it right, and not have the support. Mm -hmm. I think we can see the game plan of you know what are we going to do moving forward to turn what we have into a proposal, because we're you know coming up on hour five of uh, meetings and it's been presented to a whole bunch, uh, and we had that <coughs> exercise, and now it's kind of it's flip it. but it's just you know there were three meetings scheduled and then one in necessary. That sounds like.
what it is they expect their school district to be. And I want to give you a prime example. Okay? We need a new field house. I voted against the last one. I don't need a two story glass enclosed so the second grader can come watch football game in the field house. And I won't vote for that. I will vote for a, a smaller field house that is adequate for our athletic field needs. I am not interested. I could care less. If we ever have another damn school district come over here and use our facility and rent from us, I am, that is not our job as a school district to provide an athletic facility to anybody else. Our job is to provide a facility for our students. Okay? So we need to do this. Do we need a $60 million for multi purpose center? I don't know what's in that $60 million because you haven't given me a breakdown of the cost of what the hell we're buying. I have no clue. Do we need a robotics center? Yeah, robotics is an important function, you know. But y'all don't have a location to be determined yet, so you don't know what the freaking cost is going to be. So how can you put a price on it? So the process itself is called in the pre-2013 bond, the pre-bond that went prior to that, and you were there. I was there. You remember the conversation? Huh? I remember the first. We had 150 people in those meetings. We had five committees working in that meeting, and we met for six or seven months. Okay, in that process. And we had one committee, and granted, we had a facility assessment package this thing to go through, which you don't have now. But we had one committee, I sat on it, and we went through all the door replacement, hinge replacements, and did we spend that? And first thing we did is, if it's under $2,000, we're taking it out of the damn money. Okay? It just seems to me that this package was hastily put together between December and the time the package went out. And there wasn't a lot, and I don't know who was on the committee. For the pre bond But this is almost the same package the CPAC was given in November. There wasn't a lot of change when they came to us and said, we, we, What do you think about doing it? You think we're already doing it? And we basically said, This is what the CPAC's job to do the final new committee job. So that process that we went through, you had, you had 200 people in those meetings that bought into the bond. That's why you showed the bonds, because they were part of the process. You didn't have that. And we had a lot of data. I knew what the hell I was paying for in that bond. Mm -hmm. I had no problem going out and selling that bond. Not one of that. And I made it time before. I voted against this bond this entire day. And I told the administration I was going to vote for this months ago. Because it was too much, too fast, and you weren't you want selling the bond. You guys could put up that. I'll tell you right now, you put a bond out in November, it's going to pay it. I don't care if it's $10 million, it's going to pay it. Well, I'll tell you, we have a bond in November. It's going to be about a six to one vote because I'm going to go one. Yeah, it's going to pay it. Because you haven't done your process. So y'all need to figure out what it is. If, if the community as a whole, you know, and, and back that process. So we, we had four committees, five committees, I don't know what we had. And, we all, and those committees all made decisions on their piece. And we came to the group, and then we kind of agreed, and we took, and there was still some moderation going, and we came out with a package. At the end of the deal, we thought of guilt, and we thought of that package, okay, this is what we did. And that bond was. I don't hear the amount of money. But at the very top, I said, if you don't cut $200 million off of you, you're going to sell the bond. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was pretty high, and it was a little over $300 million. Yeah. And, 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 and we did that, and took the package and the package itself. So, so you haven't done the community. If this community wants to be the free, if they want to be Katie High School and have a $90 million freaking football stadium, okay, and vote for it, and they want to pay for it, and that's what the community wants to do, then let it put out and get its pass. But I don't think anybody's asking anybody that's what they want. Okay, I think you need to sell a multi purpose center because you didn't say anybody what was in the multi purpose center. So we need one so we don't get rained on when we have graduation one day a year, you know, for the process. Give me a break. Okay, so what am I paying for in the process? So you, even this group, you haven't given us enough data to make a decision on anything. No. Okay, and just because somebody put a dot last week on the chart, because that whole exercise was ridiculous. Okay, because I said, yeah, we need a building. Still have, but I don't want a two story to have. You didn't give me any options that process was going to be So you're a long way from the process. And I think you need to go back to this list and figure out what you're doing here. And again, to your comment on how they handle money between that, if you can go find $5 million out of how you're moving money around, then you can pay for at least four items up here kitchen equipment, you know, but then four or five. I find it hard to believe that I need to finance a million four or something to put it paying out. Technology is a whole different issue because it has to be done in mass and it has to be coordinated. <coughs> you know, but you know, making five for the kitchen equipment or whatever it is, and you need it to feed the kids, I mean, 
It's kind of like the air conditioning quit working. You're going to let it sit and be under the pond. That's not going to happen. Like, what the school board hasn't done yet, administration hasn't done yet. You haven't gone through the process uh, to do it. If you continue to proceed in this manner, you're going to lose the There are definitely things we need to have in the pond. There are no, I got you. Okay. But I can tell you, this process, the 13 process that we used prior, this process before that, will be replicated. I could have told you that a half hour ago, not before you began. <coughs> yeah, I'm pretty damn good. All right, I was there. Yeah. 13 meetings, that was it. Rhino Harrison, yeah. uh, Marjorie prepped all the stuff because I was presenting it, but she was doing it. And we had every committee. I was over the Operations Facilities Committee. Well, not head, I was, that was the one that I was the admin representative on. We went and visited the transportation at Lee Center at Lee High School. We visited the other one we had. We visited, I saw parts of buildings I didn't know existed. There were some of them in really good shape, and some of them were part of the river at this point. But we came up with a bond that everybody in that community knew was what we And that was what I had hoped this last one would do. It didn't work out that way. This going forward, this and that will be relevant. It just seems to me there's still a lot of want in this path. The need hasn't been there. We're, I think it's more, the way I look at it, it looks to me more, we're still the brainstorm. We haven't prioritized it. We haven't. Not everybody out here should ever get on the yellow bus and go visit this site and look at it. So, <laughs> get them with the data. No, I agree. The 2013 project before then, that was that what we were looking at. Can I just make one comment in response to what you were saying? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I just have a comment. Most of my professional experience is in sales, right? And we're talking about selling this bond. And whenever you're, whenever you're trying to sell something, you need to know. Basically, a lot of times it's said it's a request for more information. You know, just in what he said. We just get, get, get the information out to the public that we have. You know, <clears throat> he's very familiar about field house. Well, no one knows about revenue potential from other districts who have similar, similar that are earning anywhere from 21 to 35 million dollars a year, or with, uh, excuse me, 2.4 to 3.5 million a year in revenue from that type of facility. So if we get the information out, we find out the reason why they said that. We find out what they're looking for that's going to make them want to say yes. Um, do we have an exit poll on the bond to find out why people voted against it? Was it because the one billion dollars in debt and the sixty million dollar statement scared them off? I mean, what's the reason behind the note? Not so much about what the needs are, or what the wants are. If you find out why the why the public said no, we can take and then go back and revamp what the needs, what the wants are and go back and give them more positive information that they can make an educated decision to say, okay, yes, this makes sense to me, right? It costs me this much money to do this, to do that, to run facilities for this, to do that. If I provide this facility, okay, then you know, we have a chance to make money on paper or something within five to six years. You know, and, and if, if we give that type of information, so as a whole, we're more educated. We, 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 you know, some of it's just flash knowledge from what we see on, online and, you know, when we read once, we think it's the truth. It's on Facebook, it's real. You know, but as a whole, people who are informed will do some research, they'll find some information. And I think that if we get that out there and people see, hey, okay, this is the reason why we need to do that, and, and, and they understand and they know we know why they said no, then we can pretty much ask for whatever it is that we need to make the district better, to provide for our, our students, whether it be the academic student or the student athlete. Um, and improve to bring it to that level that we want to be at. And, I mean, that's just, I mean, that's where we need to be. Thank you, Eric. You know, I can this out, but we need to be transparent. This is why we want it. This is the pros and cons. Put it all out there. Right. Let, let everybody make an informed decision. But not cram down, throw it here. Yes, Tom? Uh, I was just going to say, you know, Mike, you brought up a good point, you know, um, of getting the community involved, but I think we've done, I, I don't know what else we can do to ask people to come to these meetings, and the people that, have, that are here today and that have showed up for the last few meetings are who's been, who has shown interest. And I understand that not everybody can make it, and that's why it's important to, to share as much information as possible, um, but we, we did put an all call out there. For everyone to join us, and if we needed to move this to another an auditorium, we would have done that. But this is who's here. Who's well, showing up. Well, first of all, all ten people to make them sun red. Then we make them sun. Yeah. Five. Right. Let's get past the make them sun. Five. You do exactly what you did in the pre-2013 
13. You know, I didn't get a call from the body to do it. I had a school board member call me up and say, Will you come be on this damn committee? As I know eight other people that were on the committee were called from my school board member. That's how the people got to that committee. That's how you got 150 people there. They were things that were submitted, and we got letters, and we got requests to come participate in that committee. And there were a lot more names that were requested than that that showed up. But there was quite a few. I got a phone call. And that we didn't do that. It wasn't, I don't know if it was, I mean, you can, this, I'm glad everybody showed up. This is great. Okay? And, and I don't know how many of y'all got it off the bank now, son, but you did your circulation figure than when I got to do In the process of going in. But you didn't do it. Okay? Anytime you just put out a general call, you're not going to get very good participation. That doesn't work in any community. Okay. I'm sure Exxon doesn't go up to the committee and say, hey, we've got this committee that's going to bother extra time on it. Who wants to come volunteer at no extra money? How many people are they going to get to come up? They make phone calls and say, hey, we have a meeting. We want to come to this place. They did this. The administration didn't do it, and the school board didn't do it. The school's going to be starting up in a few weeks. We need to get a letter that goes on from the students. If we did that. <laughs> well, but that's good. Well, that's 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 I don't have experience in the school. I ain't getting a letter. And I would be a little bad then. But I mean, the biggest point that people say is that that's not my bill of general too. I would be willing to bet that the higher percentage of the voting population in this town don't have kids in the school. She's not listening to it. I'd be willing to bet that a higher percentage of people who vote on these things in this town, the elderly people and the older people, don't have kids currently going to the school. That's true, but that's why we did register the Facebook and those are some subscribers. We have put it on our website and put it on social media. And the city shared to us. So, I mean, I, I understand exactly what you're saying about the feedback. What social media? What social media? Your Facebook and your school board page? Facebook, Twitter. Do you know how many emails a day that I go through on my general business? I get over 500 emails a day that I have. I can kind of go to the school's Facebook. The process is flawed. Y'all are making excuses for a flawed process. Go do the one work. Go back to 2013, school board members pick up the phone, call 10 people and say, I want to serve on the committee. That's how you get to the fall of the results. All right. Uh, you're right. Oh, well, partly. I agree with you. Replicate the 2013 thing. Yes, sir. I echoed the gentleman's comments before, but I want to uh, point out um, when I look at this, the majority of the yeses and nos total up to about 14. I believe there's more than 14 community members here. So I also echo the, the, the comment that this does not really give you a picture or the rest of the board or administration what the people in this room think. And I'd like to know who in this room right now is a community member that is not employed by the school district by a show of hands. Because, you know, a lot of us don't know. And we look around the room, and there's a lot more than 14 people there. I think 20 people voted the uh, for the uh, robotics thing. Other than that, 8, 10, 12 people voted. This paper is not an accurate statement of the feelings in this room. Uh, and I think, for me personally, that was because we weren't prepared to do this that night. If it was put out that, hey, we, wanna, we want your opinion, yeses and noes, then as a community member coming to this, that meeting, I would have been better prepared to go around and vote on the line. So and what I did go around, let, sorry, if no, you want to let me finish, finish. Then, uh, we were afforded the opportunity to talk with different people and get questions. I was only able to talk with two gentlemen and answer specific questions on just a couple things. Uh, but there were a lot more items to vote on. So this is not a representation even of my opinion of what yeses and noes are. Uh, no, that was just my comment was that this was our initial pass at it. It was the first time that, that you would be able to ask some specific questions about that. And the survey that we're, that we're, being ta that we're talking about, we're doing that again and providing that survey right. to you again after you've had more time. Because the last document that you got um, had a little bit more updated information as far right. as the scope of work. And the first one you got answer. didn't have that. It was a very right. general description. Then the last time, it had an uh, expanded scope of work. Um, so everything was all on one sheet here for you. So that's the first, you're correct. That's the first time that you saw it, and the first chance, the opportunity you got to, to vote on it, technically. Right. And, and as a community, community member, I felt rushed with that. And like the gentleman said, I apologize, that was not our intention. It was just right. our initial 
our initial uh, purpose to do that exercise because we had planned to do it again after you had okay. time to mull it over and, and have the financial information. After you had both of those things in hand, we wanted to do it again for you. Right. And like the gentleman said, we need to know more than just it's a field house. Why, why are you going for this? We need some more details to give an honest and fair representation. But as a member of this com uh, this committee, I don't want to go out in the public saying that 90% 90 per 90 of the committee said yes to this item when that's not a fair statement. 50% of the committee did abstain from voting in the actuality. Yeah, and that's, that's shown here by the amount of votes. That's why I included those and not just the percentage. Okay, I just wanted to get that out there and have it on. Sure, there. sure. Also, <coughs> just to figure back off of him, how many forms of active vote on the public versus the number of voters in the town. 3,000 maybe voters on the town. That was a bigger turnout than previous. That was a turnout this time and prior to the municipal elections and stuff. It was a significant turnout compared to. Right. And that's a normal for an election, and the fact of the matter is. Your $200 million bonds are going to be decided by 4% of the voters every time. It's not like you do it that. The key is, is you got to reach that 4%. Mm -hmm. They didn't happen. What on this list is a critical need like that would affect students if it doesn't pass? Uh, is there a list? Stir career uh, phase two is, is looking pretty critical. Right in your I think the phase two project is we, we need to finish that campus. Uh -huh. Phase two. Phase two. Phase two A, honestly, can, can, that can hold off a little longer, but phase two uh, is critical. Um, I just wonder. Yes, and two. Um, you know, my thing is, you know, there, were, there was a lot of pitching back in May of, you know, there are things that we that are critical that we have to get done, we can't wait on this. Yeah, that was a scenario so, that we provided to, to the board at that right. time. Yes, and sir. So the people that were voting no, it's not that we don't believe in education funding and fixing stuff. Um, and we don't want this to turn into, well, we've got to go through this process and this process, and we're going to miss November, and we're going to miss next May. And, uh, you know, I think there are things in here that we can all agree on, and we can say these are absolutely critical things that are going to start affecting students if we don't address these immediately. And maybe we can put together a package for November. Small package. Yeah. Right, small package. There's nothing that says we have to go up 437 million in one shot. Yeah. You could do a smaller package, finish the strategic plan, long range strategic plan in November, <clears throat> have the election for the small piece of things we all know on, and then get that bond going in a year and a half later, come back with the rest. Of the right. Another item that we've not, have not really discussed is you'll notice there's been an asterisk at the top of that, and it's, it's addressing um, an average of 7% construction uh, inflation rate per year. These numbers are from pretty much from May of 2018. So, and, and I, that's not seven percent on top of this entire number, but it's seven percent on top of the construction cost of this, and we've not addressed that. So, well, I want to comment on that just for one second because it's very important that this gets out. Ryan, you say I don't know how I can, but just like the cost goes up, these estimates that, that our financial advisor provided based on interest rate assumptions, and they talked about two more rate hikes this year, so interest cost only goes up two, and I think, and I'm not justifying anything because I know that there was a few steps, but one of the reasons that we did want to get it done quicker and better than later is because it's only going to cost more as we wait. Both the interest rates have gone up already, and inflation costs are going up, so it, it, it's better, sooner's better in terms of the cost factor. But, but technically, that can happen anyway because we don't sell all the bonds at one time anyway, right? So we can be affected by increases in interest rates even if the bond is passed at the first sale. And actually, fortunately, there's really not much difference between short term and long term rates right now. The short term rates are the fluctuate, the long term has been very steady. So, I mean, for the bonds that are 20 years quicker, that's not going to change anything. But we have the variable rate there, and that you does change. You'd have to refinance the fix, or that could change. Oh, that Historically, in Texas, school districts that come down and try to produce small bonds every year and a half, two years, don't do very well. They tend to fail, but often, if you try to produce bonds out on a schedule that's more than uh, any less than 40 years or five years, you 
you go back and look at districts that have that have tried to do that, they, they are continually selling bonds uh, targeted to good uh, uh, Sour Clay is a good example of that. I mean they've had five bonds sale that they tried to do small bonds and go through the process and now there is a real critical issue because they didn't go out and do a bond to address their needs for the five year period. So I think that's a I think time to go to November is going to be a big thing. School board's going to always do the school board. Why don't you, you, can also you deal with one of the first couple items since we failed in May, and then we want to come back and do the process right for the other items. We want more community feedback, and we want to get that stuff out there. And hey, here, you know, when you go to vote on the small one, hey, here's the thing, come join us at our committee meetings. So, Let's say we all agreed on 100 million. We knew we needed junior high and elementary and some technology and a few other small things, and then we all worked that well. You could look at doing that then. And then I think that's what we need. So whatever we do, watch lots of it, have a plan and to be our, transparent with the community. Our NAP profits um, are, are a good um, are a good example. What are the critical ones that are going to start impacting students that we don't have to pass it on soon uh, and see if we can come to a consensus and basically just take that list now and just start on the side and start knowing we have one through how many your top programs. I don't know, I want the district to start working for I mean, you can do it on your own too and we can have it, they can bring well, it. Well, the district has prioritized one, two, three, or four, so all the ones are the district's first, what the district is rated as the highest priority. In that first column, if there's a one, right? Mm -hmm. That's so, correct. Yeah. I think he wants to look at it fairly down. Right. 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 Send something home with the kids. Home with the kids. If it's stapled to a report card, or hey, you got to bring it back, it's great. I mean, you have registration. I don't know how well that will work. I mean, parents on the campus have the registration. They have to get the registration. You have to tax it there. But that's just getting, again, that's a start, but that's just getting people that have kids in school. So right. We have a lot of our community that you know, have, they may have rankings. What was the free day the first meeting? 34%? Only 34% of the city's population actually have children who attend our school district. Is that the number you gave in the first meeting? That's about a third of the city population are actually have kids that are enrolled, kids or grandkids enrolled in the school district. So, I mean, there has to be something outside of that. You don't get one third. You get everybody there, but it's only one third. Oh, exactly. You're not getting everybody there. Yeah, I
pennies and I mean it all affects us from a tax standpoint, of course. But we said in the past we're willing to bite the bullet on our property taxes for our kids. And that's the message that I don't think got across this. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Now, one question on scholarship. Scholarship information, right? Um, I'm privileged to have a son who's going to play baseball on a college scholarship this year. Um, whenever I sit in our honors minute, we've got uh, we heard information about all these different scholarships, $3.4 million awarded to GCM or graduates or, or students this year. So, some of these things that we want to highlight that we want to do as far as the robotics program and other things. Is there a breakdown? Is there a breakdown of what the scholarship funds that are available, or what our district, our kids have won through the different audio video programs, the robotics program, the athletic program, you know, the academic, the things that they've gotten scholarships for? Are the potential money available, you know, for them to win scholarships for to help that that some of these improvements can help help? Because my kids in sports, the whole goal is because they help pay for the, that education. Yeah. You know, that's I, I need to help pay for education. And I got three of them. You know, that's just the way it goes. You know, so, so the, the end game is to get your education paid for. If anything else comes, that's great, but you, you have to have a piece of paper. So if, if we can translate the dollar amount of, of, of the impact for future education, such as our district won this, was awarded this much money in scholarships for these programs that the bond will help facilitate, then they can see the return on their investment from an educational standpoint and from the advancement of, of, of the future of, of our community. And yeah, how we know the amount. Society. Yeah, we know the amount. So all graduations I went to, District of Mormon got up and said, this class has $3.2 million in scholarships. And Lee got up and said they have this many million. And Sterling got up and said that many. And early college high school has the same. We have all that. Right. Now just categorize and break it down by how right. much of athletics, how much of it is robotics, how much of it is academics, how much of it is fine arts. And then we can use that. Just to set who has the odds that they are alive. Yeah, exactly. I mean, right now, with potential scholarship running this for things that went elsewhere, that we had a funding facility and we're more focused on this this particular curriculum, that we could see uh, more influx of that scholarship money into our school district, which is ultimately what we want. Yeah. All right, is there any questions? Yeah, I said that when I was speaking, because I'm going to turn time over to you. But uh, first and foremost, A, let me thank everybody for being here and taking time out of your time for the last three weeks. Uh, B, thank you for your candidness uh, and, and your expressing your compliments as well as, as issues uh, of the process. And I wholeheartedly agree of the process of this last bond was not done the way this brief had, had, uh, we had done in the past. And that's we learn from that. We'll move forward on that with that piece. Uh, Beth, do we need to meet? Do we meet next week if you want to take a week off? Yes. Well, so I mean, we, talk about we had called, um, we had added next Tuesday as a possible meeting, but to talk about today, we thought this is a good breaking point. We can meet next Tuesday if you'd like to. We can have on the calendar, but that was kind of my plan tonight was just to tell everybody that you're going to be getting, I wanted you to think about all this and that you'll be getting, you know, so, um, give us some, some feedback. Via email next week, probably Tuesday. So, I mean, it's really kind of up to y'all if you want to do the meeting, have a meeting, meet, but I honestly thought it would be better use of your time not to meet. Well, I saw it posted both potentially as July 31st and as August 2nd. July 31st. It was a Tuesday. Okay, I thought it was not hopefully so.
many engagement email addresses on there? Everybody said that. So why did you say that email notifications? I did. I didn't get one. I have not gotten a single email. And it's not like I don't have my email, right, Marty? Because I give them everybody else in school. I signed up with my name on there. Are y'all getting, are y'all getting? I have got a single email. I don't know why. Did you check? Maybe it was your spam. I mean, you got a problem. You got seven people signed up. You got, you know, 30 show up. All right, so we're going to move to that. I'm going to step up on them. What exactly do you want to do on Tuesday? I know you said you want to break out the committees, break out the three different options. What should happen for a Just these months, we'll have to establish the plan for the next two or three or four weeks. Give them the information 
representing the description in the amount. Well, I have an idea. If you might explore this, is that I know they're not exactly equal in terms of items, but there's four different sections here. You could have four different committees, and perhaps before we meet, that may be something that's not a possibility. I just have not gotten to that point quite yet. Um, so I'm just suggesting as a way forward, the next meeting we meet, maybe we have to spread that out and then determine how can we. Honestly, two weeks, two weeks may be maybe appropriate um, if, if everyone's available in uh, two Thursdays from now. August 9th. Uh, August 9th. Uh, August 9th. Yeah. 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 We, we need to keep in mind that we need to call for an election if, if, if it's decided August 20th is the date. But um, the last board meeting is the 6th. I, I, I want to make one comment about the November election. I think, looking around the room, I probably am the only person in this room that was involved in the 1999 bond that failed. And I was on that committee. We regrouped in the summer and we went back in the fall and it passed. Now it wasn't the same amount, but we passed the bond in the fall after it was defeated in the back. And like I said, I think I'm the only person sitting in this room that was involved in that. Now if Don, <coughs> if Don were here, he could say he was involved too. Yeah. <laughs> he was involved too. But we did regroup then and we went back.